Welcome back, everybody. Um, I said we're doing the blind tasting event. I'm joined now by Andrew RQ, uh, who you may not have seen in our videos yet, but you will be seeing a lot more of him uh, very soon. So uh, he's a little bit more into the cigar than uh, Phil was, and uh, what do we got so far? Thanks, Roman. It's a pleasure to be here. Uh, I'm very impressed by the cigar. Uh, I did a, a nice oil sheen to it. Uh, the box press is, is light, but pronounced. Um, I'm a little over a third in, and I, I'm getting some of those, uh, those hay leather notes that are typical of Nicaraguan tobacco. But I'm sorry, is giving me some sort of uh, like wood backed chocolate, which is really nice, especially on the retro pale. I get some some cedar, and then like a, a, a milk chocolate palate coat of a really nice, rich uh, Nicaraguan tobacco. I, I'm really impressed so far. So let me just clarify a little bit. I mean, in the cigar world that we talk about, we talk a lot of different uh, flavors and things like that. One of them, a predominant flavor that a lot of people talk about is chocolate. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of different chocolate flavors that you can get, all right? So one of them is cocoa, yes. you know? So when people talk about cocoa, it's not that milk chocolate bar that you buy, you know, you don't get a Hershey bar and you bite into a Hershey sure, bar and sure. that's the sweetness that you get. The cocoa that people talk about is a dry cocoa that you would bake with or something yes. like that and you get kind of like that bitter chocolatey taste to it. Now what you're talking about in that cigar is milk chocolate. So you're yes. talking a little bit more on the sweeter side yes, I and a little bit more on the creamier side than right. the dry cocoa would right. be. Uh, I get that with cedar a lot and it's pretty creamy. Um, but this one has a little extra more pronounced uh, sweetness, especially on the retro pale. I, I, it sort of triggers more on the palate with the retro pale, which is quite nice. What does it do to your palate? Does it dry it out? Does it keep it wet? Does it? Uh... No, it, it hasn't dried it out at all, which I, I've noticed with some more peppery tobaccos that it dries my palate out. But this has been really enjoyable all the way through. Uh, we've paired it with a Four Roses small batch today, and it's going really well with that. I think it stands, the cigar stands up well to that powerful bourbon. I agree. Uh, it, we've chosen this to serve meat, which uh, it's a, a, brings out some of the fume of the of the alcohol. Uh, in in the pairing, I've found that the the pepper that you get, sort of the, the warmth of the, of the bourbon, really balances well with the, the sweetness and the creaminess that I've been picking up in the cigars. Right. Welcome back, everybody. So we're a little bit further into the cigar, and uh, you know I'm still getting the same, uh, you know, the nutty notes, the creaminess, and uh, I'm not really picking up the cocoa like you mentioned, the chocolate actually like you mentioned, but uh, I do get a lot of that, the cedar, the, the uh, I said that creaminess, and uh, you know, a lot of that nuttiness in my cigar. And I said it's very enjoyable. It, you know, coats my palate nicely, and it's doing really well. Uh -huh. Absolutely. So let's bridge us into. Um, you know, obviously keeping cigars, so obviously, you know, you're not going to just buy a cigar and, you know, burn it right away. I mean, I guess some people do that, but, you know, those of us who have humidors at home and things, we uh, talk about ways to store cigars, and uh, we've talked about different storage techniques before, but let's talk about some humidification. So what do you normally use when you humidify your cigars at home? Um, well, I've got, uh, I have two humidors. I, I have a desktop, and then I've converted a wine for it. There, I use one of the larger Boveda packs. Okay. Um, I, I like to keep mine under 70. Under so which percent Boveda pack do you use? I use 69%. Okay. In my desktop humidor, I use a jar of, of propylene glycol, and I've also used beads in the past, okay. which I use distilled water. Uh, it's always preferable. Uh, I have quite a few different humidors, and uh, one of them is a self-contained unit, obviously it's humidification and mm -hmm. temperature control, just like yours is, but I keep mine a little bit lower. I, I try to stick around 65% for long-term aging, mm -hmm. uh, both temperature and humidity. Right. Um, Nicaragua stuff, I think, you know, a little bit oiliness likes to be a little bit wetter mm -hmm. uh, than others, but um, with regards to the humidification, you mentioned the beads. So mm -hmm. those are silica beads that you can already get that are trained to a specific uh, RH, mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, you can buy those, and you can just set them into the, uh, the wine door or the uh, cooler or whichever else that you're mm -hmm. using, and, uh, you know, obviously you wet them periodically and, you know, spray them with a spray bottle, um, so that way they, they don't dry out. What they're doing is they're absorbing and releasing right. the uh, the moisture. So, have you ever heard of clay beads? No, I'm not familiar. So they do actually have a different kind of bead also. That's a clay bead, hmm. and you don't actually wet these because they can shatter. So oh. their job is to actually just kind of absorb moisture. It doesn't get too hot or too wet in your humidor, mm -hmm. um, and you can dry those out as well if they get too wet and everything else. So a uh, different kind of bead, clay beads, which you don't hear too much about, but. Um, I don't, I don't want to say they're older, but you know I've had mine for a very long time, and uh, 
they work really well in that regard to make sure they don't go over a specific percentage of our age. Kind of keep things more on the level. Mm -hmm. Now the other trick is uh, kitty litter. I know we talked about this briefly earlier, and uh, you know one of the cheaper poor man's uh, ways of creating the beast is to actually get kitty litter. Now don't just go out and buy tidy cat or whichever. <laughs> um, you want to make sure that you're getting the non-scented and you want to make sure that you just get the silica-based kitty litter. Hmm. All right, it comes in giant bags and you can divvy that up into uh, different containers and put them throughout your humidors. Now you do have to train this because the beads will come trained for you. You can mm -hmm. tell that you want 65 or 69% right. whichever that you want. So you do have to train these up a little bit so it's a little bit more labor intensive, but again, you can get a two pound bag for like $15. Oh, wow. So, uh, like I said, poor man's way of doing it, you just got to put a little bit of labor into it. So, so how do you put that into your storage device, into your humidor or your... So I actually have, um, I use fish tank bags. Fish so tank you can get a bag that's like a microfiber bag from uh, that are used in fish tanks for, you know, different uh, oh. uh, things that you want to put in your fish tank chlorine or whichever, but yeah. obviously um, this is more meant, I just put the beads in there and it, you know, it's kind of depending on what size you want, but hmm. uh, you put all that a silica in there and then just let it sit in there so but again you got to train it up so you, you have to start off with training it usually I train it up with some distilled water and some low beta packs uh, to make sure that that R range is going to be steady before you actually put it into your humidor no kidding so and I have you know those kind of set around throughout my humidors uh, so you said you keep it at 65 for storage uh, do you keep it at 65 for things that are your, your daily drivers so it depends. Like I said, Nicaraguan cigars I really like a little bit wetter because they're a little bit more oily. You don't want to dry the oils out, so right. I keep those at 68 to 69 percent also. Um, but yeah, long-term storage is 65 percent, and then daily stuff is usually 68 percent or so for me. Now a lot of people just you know maintain just a small desktop humidor, mm -hmm. you know, 50 count humidor, whichever on their desk, whether it's you know glass or non glass or whichever. But a lot of them come with one of these pucks. Yes. That come with that black puck inside. Now, I have never had success with this no. puck. You know, you're supposed to use distilled water or one of those solutions in it. Mm -hmm. No matter what happens, after about a month or so, that thing molds. Yes. Absolutely. I have never had success with one of those pucks. So yeah. the first thing I do when I get it, I chuck it. Chuck it out. And uh, I'm not saying that you guys may have success, and that would be great. If you do, tell me what I'm doing wrong. I'd love to hear about it. <laughs> um, but man, I can never get anything in there that doesn't mold. So I've had the same issue. Uh, my desktop came with a, a puck, you know, a rectangular one. That um, it was it was not helpful. It, I had to I had to reseason it, recharge it frequently, and I finally said, I'm going to upgrade. And I, I put a propylene glycol jar in. Yeah. Which which has done a really good job, and then on, on a purchase, uh, one of the brick and mortar places threw in a bag of beads, and that bag of beads has lasted me for a long time. Every two months, three months or so, I, I recharge it with some distilled water, and it does great. Right. Now, you mentioned something about seasoning humidors and things like mm -hmm. that. That's something we'll talk about in another topic mm -hmm. on how to properly season a humidor, or at least the way we do it, right. um, to get your humidor to actually hold humidification, because when you get them, they're actually dry, and they'll tell you that you have yes. to. Um, get them to the proper RH for the wood inside of it. Absolutely. So, now the other thing you brought up is one of those propylene glycol jars. I mean, some of them, like you've seen, like the black ice or whichever that right. you can order, and right. they have a lot of these different beads in it that, as you put water in it, they expand and they fill the jar, and then as they're drying out, they kind of sink down to the bottom of the jar, and you know, yeah. it's time to recharge those. Um, and again, about a month or so, and those work pretty well also to maintain humidification. Mm -hmm. So, uh, if you want to go that route, give those a try. Um, I've had people say that they mold and things, but I think that maybe because it would be over wet them, they have that propensity of having a lot of extra water, and just want to be careful with that. But I haven't had a problem with mold when I've used that. Nor have I. So, but yeah, so there's so many different techniques on humidification. Um, Moveda is a great product. Uh, if you haven't tried them out, you can. There are a lot of available, a lot of brick and mortar. So Absolutely. give them a call if you haven't tried them. They have a lot of different percentages. They've got a 62. They've got a 65. They've got a 69. They've got a 72. Yep. They even have an 84 percent, which they actually talk about. That's what they use to see the humidors. Oh, no so they've got a, like, a wide variety. I think they even go less than that for people who want to maintain like collectibles and things like uh -huh. an old guitar or something no, like yeah. that, so it doesn't get uh, dry and things like that. Especially, I mean, we're in Michigan, so we have a drier climate in the mm -hmm. winter. So uh, you want to make sure that stuff's not getting. Dry. Absolutely. Again, as long as you have a maintained humidor and things like that, um, even then, like I said, we've talked about different ways of keeping it. I mean, from coolers to, you know, um, sterilite boxes that are gasket boxes to yep. humidors to coolers and wine doors and everything else. There's a wide variety. And like I said, the poor man's one, just the cheap Ziploc bag works pretty well. It does. Pinch, so, it does. Um, and it's good for traveling. Yeah. Going someplace.
as long as you're not worried about them being crushed. True. So they do have herfidors and wine or uh, herfidors and travel cases for that. So, um, but if you're just traveling in a car, you want to put a couple in there and throw a boveda back in there. Perfect. Right. Uh, so, well, thanks for joining us for a little information segment. Um, we'll join you guys in the final third of the cigar, and we'll talk a little bit more about it here in a few minutes. Thanks. Ron. Well, to wrap up, uh, I have finished the cigar, and Phil is, is just uh, at uh, the, the burnt fingertips stage. Just about. Um, and to uh, to give you sort of the final thoughts, I, I really enjoyed it. Uh, yeah. I'm not exactly sure what it is yet, but... Uh, we have the we have the card to reveal right here in a little bit in a second. We do, and I, I'm looking forward to knowing what it is. Some of the, the things that I think about at the end of a cigar, especially at the end of one of these events, is would I buy it again? Of course. And, uh, Sort of the threshold for me is would I buy it one more time, would I buy it to give away, or would I buy five and not share it? Yeah. And uh, in, in this Start case, order. I would. In this case, I think I would, I would buy it in bulk, and I, I would keep a fair percentage of it for myself. I really enjoyed this one. Yeah. I mean, right off the bat, for me, the cigar itself didn't open up like I wanted it to once we got past that initial burn, but once that creaminess and that coffee nuttiness hit. I know it sounds weird to put all those together, but that's how it was on my palate, you know? Didn't dry my palate at all, which is really great because I didn't have to sit there and keep drinking water or something else. It paired really well with the Four Roses small batch, I think. Um, I do enjoy that bourbon as it is, or that whiskey, if you want to call it. Um, I, I enjoy it. But the cigar itself definitely is a buy for me. Sure. Um, we don't really go into, like, numbers on this. We just want people to experience the, the flavor for it itself. We had a... A good turnout tonight. We had about 25 plus people out here tonight, which is really good. Um, the cigar itself, I guess we can go rip this bad boy open real quick. Give me one second. I'm looking forward to knowing what it is. The uh, Nicaraguan tobacco gave a great flavor that uh, is typical in my experience with the Nicaraguan cigars. So I definitely did not expect it to be a Hoya de Nicaragua cigar. It is the Hoya Silver. The Silver one. Which I believe is one of their newer lines out now. Um, it is the, Country origin is Nicaragua. It has the Ecuador Oscuro wrapper, the Mexico binder, and the Nicaraguan filler. Really good cigar. I enjoyed it. And it's a, a, a kind of a unique blend. I, I feel like. Yeah, and you know, I think the box press helps with that. I agree. The, I, there are some people that that are opposed to the box press. I like them because they don't roll off the, the golf cart. Yeah. Uh, or even off the table. Off you the can set it down and walk away. We did have a couple of guys that you know didn't like the potency of the cigar. The cigar got a little stronger towards the end. I'm a big Pepper Bond fan. I right. love Pepper. Yeah. Most people don't. It's just an acquired profile palette taste, so to speak. But overall, everyone enjoyed the cigar, which is great. A couple people went in there and bought a couple more to take home. So it was definitely another good experience here with the Leaf and Libations with the blind tasting. I didn't like going in blind myself. Usually I know what it is ahead of time. So it was a good surprise to you know actually experience this for the first time. I really enjoy the, the type of event that l and holds here where it's totally blind. You don't know the reviews, you, you, you get to know what the tobaccos are and that's yeah. about it and you get to experience the cigar yep. rather than experience the brand. Yep, you don't have to experience the number profile, like what it's rated in certain areas. You just get to try it and if you don't like it, you don't like it. But if you enjoy it, that's great. It's good. Yeah, you know, I, I did. I, I enjoyed it quite a bit. Like I said, this is one that I would buy in bulk and I would uh, keep a fair percentage for myself. That's great to know, and like I said, I would stock them as much as I could afford. So, uh, thank you for joining us here on another Leaf and Libations episode. We'll be on YouTube again. Um, you can click the link below. Find out any more information you need regarding our website. You can visit us at www.thelnl.net. If you're interested in coming out for one of our blind tastings, we do a blind tasting every second Wednesday of the month here in Michigan. We are in Troy, Michigan at Ambassador Cigars and Spirit. If you want to check us out every second Wednesday from 7 p.m. to 9 p.m., come on in. You get a cigar and you get a pour, whether it's a bourbon, a whiskey, a gin, whatever we're doing that night, it's $20 a ticket. Come on out, enjoy it, and experience wine tasting for the first time. Have fun and bring some friends. That's a wonderful event. Thank you and for Sully and for Roman who's off camera. Thanks for joining us and have a wonderful day. Thanks.